Hey, so I finally decided to make a video about this game after it came out. Can't believe it's been three years since that specific game got announced, and for two of those years, we got absolutely nothing. Then the third year was covered with so many confusing things and us not having a clear answer on what this game is really trying to be. Marvel's Avengers came out to everyone on September 4th, 2020, and after the three-year wait, is it really worth it? I mean, at the time of me literally recording, Best Buy revealed their Black Friday sales, showing the game is like 30 bucks now. So what I'm trying to say is is it worth any of your money at all i'll tell you by the end of this video I remember being so excited for Marvel's Avengers even from E3 2019. I was thinking that this was going to be the next video game that can overtake Spider-Man and the Batman games and show that other heroes in video games are cool too. And after playing Marvel's Avengers for way too long on PC, I can say no. Just flat out just say it. You see, once the beta came out for Avengers, it basically showed everyone 100% that this game was going to be a looter third person brawler, basically that is a games as a service kind of thing. I'm not the biggest fan of games as a service and so are a lot of people, but it do be Avengers and they did say new content every month. Anyways, now that you know what kind of game it is, I guess it's time to finally talk about the gameplay and how I feel about it. The combat for this game is just your standard third person brawler where you just have your normal square button for light attacks and triangle for heavy attacks where you can just combine both for combos. You can attempt to do combos with some characters like Cap, but later down the road it really doesn't reward you for pulling off something that is different and doing the same method doesn't hurt your progress either. The dodge mechanic in this game is really weird to be honest. It feels like you dodge but sometimes you still get hit or some laser just hits you from the background that you didn't really see. I just don't like the threat indicators in this game in general. There's so much stuff to pay attention to in the game that those little indicators on your screen are just something you can easily miss. And most of them which are even more annoying don't even show up on your screen so you can get hit with something that wasn't even really your fault but the game's fault. To this day they're still fixing it with each patch but I still get the same annoying results as of right now. Another thing that I really do hate in the game is the stun lock. You can get hit then you're basically logged for a couple of frames and it feels like forever to recover from a hit. When you're flying if you get hit you just fall all the way down into the ground and have a couple of frames open for enemies just to pile on you which really sucks. Mix that with the fact that there are so many enemies that are projectile and can easily one shot you most of the time or enemies with lasers that you don't sometimes notice and you just get swept up by one which equals one annoying experience or imagine that in a corner with mechs and projectile enemies piling on you while you're trying to get back up. The difficulty for this game doesn't really feel nice at all, it's not like a rewarding kind of one, it's just if you can survive the random stupid stuff the game can throw at you all at once without deciding to quit the game at all. The only benefit is if you choose a higher difficulty you get better loot, but you basically only need to just do that in vault missions and skip most of the enemies and just open all the chests. Like honestly I like the difficulty in games, especially superhero games, adding a bigger challenge like how the Arkham games on its new game plus you basically get the counter indicator removed and you have to pay attention to the enemies a lot more and if you die it's mostly on you. On DMC5 in Dante Must Die mode you basically have to put your skills to the test and be able to survive enemies that have a devil trigger now. I just use DMC as an example because I like the franchise. Okay. I just prefer higher difficulties, not just adding random annoying spikes or just adding all the most annoying enemies in a room, but being more on you and wanting to fix that and be better. I just wanted to be skill based, basically. I would like to say the mission structure and level design of the game is so boring. There are like five actual different areas you can go to the game, which really feels lifeless and are nothing special at all. Add that to the fact the mission structure is basically the same and it just feels boring after like the first couple of war zones that you do. I know we're getting more areas in the game but I have the feeling it's just going to be the same sort of thing with a lifeless sort of map that just looks different for you to fight robots in. It doesn't help when traversal is outside of flight based characters kind of suck. It feels like the fastest way is to just sprint and jump to the objective actually rather than use the character's traversal ability. I hope once we get down into the end game post content stuff it'll be better since Kate got delayed and she was literally supposed to come out on Halloween but it's like November 7th right now. So yeah, 
The only reason to come back and play the war zones is for the gear. The gear system is the drive of what makes you want to replay the same boring missions over and over again. The gear at the beginning I thought it was alright but instead it kind of got boring. I'm not even mad that it doesn't customize the character, I prefer that it's mostly stat based and we don't really get ugly armor looking gear like Injustice 2. The main motivation I see in all of this is just making a build on a certain character that you like and seeing how it works. For my cap I made him focus on his Brooklyn Brawler ultimate and the amount of damage he puts out and for my Thor I made him focus on his lightning and heroic tax a little more with him also having good damage. Tony, did you sign me up for a dating website? You need to get back out there. A site for senior citizens. Oh man, I put in your birth date and I guess it just uh... The characters in this game are alright in terms of gameplay, Cap is easily my favorite character in the game with him having the option to kind of juggle enemies in the air and his shield throw and kick kind of feel nice. Black Widow is fine, sorta, of. she doesn't feel right when fighting enemies sometimes, she has some combo game but it feels limited. Kamala is fine, I'm not the biggest fan of her combat, and even leveling her up it just feels eh. Iron Man is alright, even after upgrading him a lot, it seems like the rockets are the only OP move to just spam and win depending on how you upgraded him. Thor is nice, his lightning attacks are great honestly, he doesn't really have any combos, but he is a hard hitter and more of an AoE attacker. Hulk might be the weakest character in the game and it just feels most of the time all you need to do is spam triangle and simply do one move as especially in closed areas, he's just so mediocre to play. Receive joy through a mutual transaction. So, the more I buy, the happier you get? Correct. One thing I forgot to mention that's really important is the microtransactions. So this game has microtransactions for cosmetics that look boring and just dull. Well, that's the thing with the graphics in this game. It doesn't really pop like the other two Spider-Man games that we have, with Miles being like a neon noir and Marvel Spider-Man just having that kind of pop color even though the advanced suit looks orange. Most of the suits are recolors of an already pre-existing suit, so you're just basically spending another like 1,400 credits for another recolor of a suit. It kinda sucks, and that's basically like $20 in the real world. The challenge cards are basically the battle pass for each character, and they're not really that bad, they just incite you to just play the game more with the character that you wanna finish and level out. They don't even really take that long to finish a challenge like each day, it takes at most 20 20 minutes just to finish one. If you're willing to do it, it takes like a whole month just to finish a challenge card for a character, but honestly, you could just play all six characters, finish the challenge pass in a month, and then just get like 7,000 credits, which is enough to spend for any DLC character's challenge patch, which is like a thousand credits. And if you just keep doing that method, you, you never really have to spend money in this game at all, except for the marketplace. The main campaign follows what happens after the events of the A Day prologue, which featured a young Kamala that was like 11 in the Avengers at their prime, I guess. I will say the parts where young Kamala met most of the Avengers were wholesome and it was enjoyable to watch. Minus that one scene that was extremely cringeworthy, but whatever. After that segment, we go into the mission everybody has seen and played a million times already. Then the big boy Avengers fail, and we see a time skip where Kamala is browsing Reddit. Yes. And she's figuring out Tony Stark password, which is... Dude, your password was I am Iron Man. Really? After that part, at least a Tarleton or Ten-Headed Man fighting out and Kamala getting let out of Jersey to go to Ohio, which we meet a broken Bruce Banner. Honestly, I do like Bruce in this story. The mentor figure he plays basically to Kamala is great and never really thought of out of all the characters, Bruce being the sort of mentor figure for anyone. After that, we do the beta missions, the Abomination boss fight, and Tony, which I honestly do like Nolan North's voice that he gives for Tony. Sure, it's hard to get used to after you hear him a 
a lot of other video game roles, but it got easy for me to get used to. Some stuff with Tony later, building a new suit, we go to Kamala and Bruce fighting Hank Pym's resistance. Later on, we do a mission with Kamala, which in the end, she does get captured by Monica. Honestly, the story just felt really uninteresting to me, and I was starting to get bored until that halfway point, because once we started with a story mission that plays right off that, and now the story just felt more interesting. We got to learn what Monica's true intentions were, and how she's basically using Inhumans for Adaptoids and some Dark Terrigen stuff, I forgot. I might be the only one, but does anyone else feel like Monica reminds them of Injustice 2 Wonder Woman, of being the smug? annoying and manipulative uh, villain in the game or it just might be me hating how annoyingly smug she was most of the time like even Monica feels like more of a main villain than Modok she even got her own post credit scene with her having multiple clones of her like what <laughs> Mora just felt like he was there in the background and then he just shows up at the end because we have to fight the final boss to get the campaign over with. The plot ended up just being the most generic superhero story, but something bad happens while the characters are at their prime and then they break up and then insert time gap and new character comes and unites them all together. And then boom, heroes come back and fight big bad man, the end. Surprisingly, the 8 to 10 hour campaign was the perfect length for a game structure like this for its level and other things but it still feels like we got nothing from it all in terms of characters like for a game called Marvel's Avengers you would sort of expect the story being able to focus on all the Avengers but the campaign may have seemed like we only focus on like three of them being Tony, Bruce, and Kamala. Kamala obviously getting the most treatment since she's the essential main character of the story. She had some annoying moments and some nice moments. Characters like Cap, Widow, and Thor got basically nothing other than their own tiny missions in the story. I mean, Cap makes sense, but we don't see him till the near end of the story with us having to do only a couple missions till we get to the end. Widow just feels like she's just there only to help, and Thor, oh man, Thor. Thor basically didn't even need to be there at all. If you remove Thor from the whole game, you would just get the exact same story. He mostly only has two major scenes in the game and that's it. He just sort of walks in and comes back. We don't know where he was or how he really felt guilty for Cap's death other than just giving up. The iconic missions were basically supposed to tell us what the characters have been doing during the five year gap after a day or a whole mini story that was centered around them. We just got the same sort of war zone missions, but we with new dialogue from the characters that is centered around them. I was really disappointed by that and I was hoping for something like a whole mini story that took place like after A Day but before the main story. Like for example, we could have a Black Widow iconic mission chain where we saw what she was doing after A Day or how she was able to sneak into AIM and was undercover for like was a year or multiple. Maybe with Bruce we could have gotten a, an iconic mission chain where he by himself tried to uncover what happened after A Day which led him to getting it angrier and being a darker color since the story just said that out of nowhere. So Thor's iconic mission p had potential to be neat but it ended up still being the same sort of war zone mission but we got a tiny new cutscene and figuring out that the imposter Thor was Loki obviously. Like, how did this man not figure out that this was his brother's doing? You know, the one that would be able to mimic you, do this just to mess with you? We didn't even get a boss fight, it just ends with Thor figuring out that the fake Thor was Loki. Iconic missions could have been great, little solo missions to flesh out each version of the Avengers, since we didn't get to see much of that in the story, but alas, we just got the exact same kind of war zone, but with different dialogue, so yeah. That kind of sucks. I really hope when DLC comes out, we get the story mission centered around the character only. So basically, TLDR story was mediocre with it having a lot of potential with their characters. The world may look a little different from the last time we were here. But so do most of us. We helped create MODOK. And humans. AIM. Monica. That is on us but we won't walk away from it. We are going to face this head on. Do right by the people we've hurt. Stop those who want to hurt others, but most of all- We do it together. <clears throat> Sorry, I was, I was just really into it. <laughs> what she said. Avengers, assemble. 
So yeah, three years have led to this, a games as a service game based off one of the most popular franchises right now. I may have sounded only negative throughout this short review, but the game kinda has a charm. Kind of. It may be dead on PC and I can barely get a match with multiple people at all, but the community is still alive, wanting this game to be great one day and I truly hope that. I'll continue playing the game because I too hope it gets better one day and I might just do a year two review on this game if there are really drastic changes throughout the time of this recording and later on. I really do hope that the DLC is not what I expected being just boring but with a different character because I'm hyped for the characters that got leaked. I don't want to talk about who but I don't know if they'll actually be good or fun. So basically this game is a 6 out of 10 or 5.5 right now but anyways bye guys see you in the next video time to play Miles now.